Hi, I'm Youssef, and today we have a guest. It's Jason Laser. It's his second video with us, and today he'll be introducing some exciting features on notebooks. Hi, Jason. Hey, Yosef. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, nice to meet everyone. My name is Jason, and I'm a product manager here at Databricks on the Notebooks team. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of cool stuff. I'm excited to, to show you today. Yeah, so I've been using those features for a couple of weeks. And to be honest, they did massively, massively improve my productivity. And my goal was like, I need Jason back to show these cool features. Awesome. Well, let's uh, let's let's dive in. Let me share my screen here. Okay. And uh, you know, I I thought maybe we could do some slides, but honestly, the notebook is a great presentation tool, and so you know, we can just jump right into the notebook in, in a live demo of what we have here. So just as some back history, the notebook is is one of the uh, one of the oldest products at Databricks. We've had it kind of from the beginning, and uh, you know, recently we've been putting a lot of effort into making it more simple and more powerful. Um, to be honest, you know, before it was a little bit intimidating for some of our users. There's a lot going on. And so we kind of redid the entire UI to make it just simple and focus on the things that uh, matter most to users. So like the first thing I'll, I'll, I'll jump in and talk about here is the new cell design and the new result table. So if you can see here, we have uh, the new cell design and it's a lot more minimal. It focuses on just exactly what you want to do. So we have a, a nice single click to run button here which is cool. We now have cell titles just directly right here. And uh, they have an AI title button. So I can click generate uh, via AI and then I, I get a nice thing. Um, you know, the cool thing about this is in order to help improve notebook navigation and organization, these titles also show up in the table of contents. So I can see right here, I have my, my modern intuitive UX and then I have the subtitle of my, my cell there. So um, it's really easy to kind of stay organized now if you use AI to auto generate your titles or you just give them titles right there. We also have a new focus mode. So I talked about this in my, my last video, but we've been making a lot of uh, improvements to this. So if you want to just focus on one output and cell at a time, you can just go into focus mode here. And this is great for viewing a full screen um, output table, you know, if you want to use the whole width of the screen. Um, and if you really just want to focus in on what you're doing in a single cell. So I know for me, I get distracted by, um, you know, everything going on sometimes. And so this is helpful to kind of just jump into this, this focus mode. The, uh, the next thing that um, I, I can chat about with the new cell UI is um, it's really easy to now kind of rearrange your notebook. So if I just click on this drag handle down here, um, it just snaps up and I can just drag it to wherever I want throughout um, the, the page, which is really cool and really convenient for, for kind of organizing your notebook. And with that, we've also have an improved markdown rendering. So if I just click in here, I don't know about you, but I always have a hard time um, knowing what my markdown will look like after I'm done with it. And so now we have this, this show preview button, which will show me exactly what it looks like right now. And then instead of having to memorize what different commands are, I can, you know, I can just click this button to, to make it a uh, a bullet, or if I want to, you know, make it a heading, I can I can click that. If I want to make words bold, I can just click the the bold button. Or if I want to italicize, I can I can do that. And so, um, you know, really easy now to just document your your notebook and write markdown and see exactly what's happening as you're working. So excited to 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 bring that to everyone too. I was struggling with this one because each time I needed to you know write H one, then write this, and then exit and I click on enter to have the result and say, okay, no, it's too big. I need to make it smaller. And this is really solving this, this pain. So amazing. Yes, ex exactly. I I'm, I'm the same way, uh, is, is you, Yosef. So cool. So that's kind of the, the new cell UI. And now if I talk about the new result table, this is the next piece that we've really kind of worked from the ground up to rebuild. Um, it's now much more performant scrolls really, really quickly. Uh, it has infinite scrolling, which is great. And has a lot of new, powerful, nice little features. So, um, you know, I have like things I can hover over the tooltip to kind of see, um, you know, what uh, what data type it is. I have data type tooltip, so I can quickly glance at all of my data and see kind of what it is at a high level. And the one thing I'm really excited about is um, our new filtering capabilities. So, it's really easy to add filters now. If if you um, if you don't want to write. Uh, kind of more advanced SQL, or, or if you just want to stick with just super basic SQL of just select star, 
you can do that. And then if I want to go in here and say, I want to see only countries um, in the continent of Asia, I can just right click and say, filter by this value and which, which I then have all the, the values in the continent of Asia. And then if I actually want to exclude certain values, you know, I can just right click here and say, exclude this value. And so it's really easy to kind of um, chain these, these different filters together to really do advanced um, kind of data exploration without having to write any code, which is awesome. If I go down here, I could show you something that's cool too with this is our, the filtering mechanics are different depending on the data type. So right here, it's just a, um, this is a string filled. And if I filter, I get the options to like, you know, contains is one of, um, starts with, ends with, you know, all the kind of the string stuff. But if I go over here and find a date time and I do a filter here, I get different options. So I get like after, before, um, between. And then if I click on uh, this, I get an actual date calendar where I can then go and select the date that I want to, I want to find dates after this. So it's really convenient, really easy to be able to, to filter through different types of, of data. And so, yeah, we're really excited about the, the new result table and just, you know, all the ability that it gives you to kind of jump in and explore your data without writing much code. I have to, I will mention also we have improved selection mechanics. So, you know, if you really want to, if you want to copy things, um, you know, you can really easily just um, copy different columns and rows and uh, it's just really easy to work with that. So hopefully you all will enjoy uh, the improvements to, to the new result table. I did. So I guess they would enjoy it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. Now, the next piece of the, the notebook that we've been working a lot on is embedding AI and intelligence in it to um, you know, just make it more simple and more powerful. So the first thing that I'm excited to talk about is Databricks Assistant Autocomplete. And this is something we released uh, just uh, a few weeks ago, and I'm personally really excited about it. So as you can see here, I have a, a SQL query or a SQL comment here that just says, I want to query countries with a population of above 10 million and a life expectancy of above 77 years. So now if I just um, hit enter here and I'll just type, uh, you know, I want to do a select here and you can see I get, um, I get a, a recommendation for exactly how to write this query. So there you go. So just, uh, just did it for me. So again, really awesome. And it's, it's powerful if you just want to write a comment and tell, and it will just tell you how to do it. Or um, if you're writing complex code, it can give you recommendations um, based on the context of what you're doing. So super excited about that one. The next thing uh, next we're embedding, embedding intelligence is with um, the SQL language switcher. So this is really nice uh, because, so this is a Python notebook. And you know, if I want to write SQL here, I have to type uh, percent SQL. But now we have an auto language switcher. So if I just type select star from, um, you can see it just automatically added the percent SQL. And um, now I can just type my code. So this has saved me personally a ton of time and hopefully it will save you time. I don't know, Joseph, do you, does this happen to you? Yeah, lot. and trust me, those tiny details make the difference. I try, I, I can feel your pain. <laughs> yes, yes, well, no, yeah, that's awesome. Glad, glad it's helped you. And, and yeah, definitely something I do on a, like a daily basis at this point. Um, so this has been a, been a super good time saver for me. Um, so one of the things we can do in Databricks, which is really awesome in the, in the notebooks is you can work between SQL and Python. So um, if right here, I'm just gonna convert, I'm gonna take the output SQL DF and I'm gonna convert it to a pandas data frame so we can use it later um, for some of our other demo stuff, but I just wanted to, to run that. Um, another thing that we uh, are releasing very soon that I'm very excited about, uh, which embeds intelligence is what we're calling text to filter. So this is another data set I have here. So this is the Titanic data set. So it just has um, information about people who were on the Titanic. And so I showed you how you could add filters um, via the UI here, but you know, why, why add them that way? Why not just tell it exactly what I want to filter with natural language? So if I click filter display data here, I get a, a, a prompt here. It says, what do you want to do? So, you know, I'm interested in um, only males over 70 on the Titanic. Don't know how many people there were that. So if I just uh, type that in, it automatically creates the filters that I want and gives me only males over the age of 70. And again, if I wanted to dig in more, I could, I could type another natural prompt and just kind of chain these to really quickly explore my data. So this is a super cool uh, feature that we're excited to bring very soon uh, to, you, to you all. Yeah, another way to improve the data exploration. Exactly, exactly. 
Um, I've, I've shown this one before, but I can't, uh, I can't give a demo without showing the inline assistant. And now it's updated with a cool new icon here. So you can see uh, you have a, a little animation, which is cool there. So if I click that, um, again, this is a super easy way, just using natural language to say, um, or say, let's say, find the top 10 songs based on number of streams. And if I just hit enter there, boom, just wrote me the SQL to do that. And if I run it, it runs correctly and gives me um, the top 10 songs from this Spotify playlist for last year um, based on number of streams. So again, a super awesome way to, to just explore your data uh, in a very simple way. Um, the, the cool thing about the assistant is uh, it could also do it in, in Python too. So if I just say like, you know, just copy um, this again and say, you know, find the top 10 streams using the Spotify DF now this time. Um, it, it can do that now. Um, so I think it actually switched back into Spark. We'll see if uh, we'll see if this works. Um, but there you go. So yeah, so super easy to kind of uh, do whatever you want with the assistance. Very powerful. Um, and, and yeah, great way to just use natural language to explore your data. So again, really making trying to make things simple here. And and just to to, to highlight. So for those who are uh, wondering how. Uh, the AI is able to find the right table. So keep in mind that with UC, now we have the possibility to generate automated uh, comments uh, over uh, table and columns. And that's what helps uh, you when you're writing, uh, you're using AI within the notebook to find the right table. Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, it we the, the AI has access to, yeah, if, the more you document your, your data and tables, the better your AI recommendations are going to be. So, uh, so yeah, it would definitely encourage you to to use UC and to to, to put comments and kind of document what's going on. It will help um, both your team and the AI to give you better recommendations. Exactly. So finally, the the third pillar of of ways we're making the notebook more simple and more powerful is by bringing powerful IDE features, um, select IDE features into the notebook. So the the first one that I want to call it is just like syntax error highlighting and quick fixing. So um, you can see here, like this is a, this is valid, but um, you know I haven't imported um, NumPy, and so if I just hover over this, you know I, I can see undefined name, and I can just click quick fix here, and I could do, try to do it with the assistant, which would do it, or I could just automatically do it with um, the language service proto server protocol and just say import NumPy as MP, and then it it, it fixes that. Um, so again, we're we're bringing in IDE features that that give you kind of that syntax hiding to tell you when your stuff is wrong, and then a quick way to to fix them. And then this next one is one uh, I, I'm really excited about. Um, I know um, uh, a lot of other people are excited about this too, and that is the integrated debugger. So if I run this code, um, you know, this is supposed to, to to plot a graph of the different valences for um, the different streaming platforms. So Spotify, Apple, and Deezer. And if you can see here, I, it's it's giving me an error. Uh, NP arrays. Uh, this is kind of a confusing error. Not quite sure what's going on here. And so we now have an integrated debugger to kind of figure out what's going on. So if I just click right here and I say debug cell, um, it will take me into um, a debug mode where now I can do um, step by step and kind of go through each line. So um, if I go through here, um, you know, so let's let's look at um, the values I'm getting. So if I step over, Spotify average valence looks looks right to me. And if I go Apple average valence, that kind of looks like a good thing to me. And now Deezer average valence, I can see, oh, oh my gosh, look here, I have um, just numbers. I forgot to call the, the dot mean um, function here. And so uh, I can just easily see that that was the error. Um, and then I can um, just stop and rerun the, uh, the, the code cell and see if that fixed my error for me. And it looks like it did. So again, just really powerful way. And uh, I know personally, this is this has stopped me from using VS Code. I'm able to use uh, Databricks and just kind of step by step and do big data debugging, which is uh, which is super helpful. I couldn't agree more with you. So each time you're bringing new stuff, so try, I can't wait to invite you a third time just to see what you gonna bring. <laughs> yes. No. Well. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, and and yeah, hopefully everyone uh, everyone enjoys the uh, the the improvements. Uh, we're going to be at Data and AI Summit, so definitely if you're there, stop by. Uh, we'll have a session where we'll share even more cool stuff, um, and and yeah.
Thank you, Jason. And make sure to register to attend the Data and AI Summit either in person or you can still register for the webinar. Thank you.